Oh, Puppy Turtle. I hate to say this, and I know you disagree, but your own personal experiences are meaningless. Because A, they are your own. That's a given, but they're only applied to you and they're only the things that you've ever experienced. B, every other religious group and person has the exact same things, but referring to their own religions and gods. <clears throat> a Muslim will have experiences with Allah and life-changing things. Hindus will have Vishnu, Jews will have Yahweh, and so on. It all comes down to it's these are your personal experiences. You know, why should I accept your personal experiences over everybody else's? You know, even within the same religion, you've got Christians who've think there is nothing wrong with homosexuality. You know, Christians who think the homosexuals should be killed and executed as the Bible commands. They're following what the, command, what the Bible says. Why do you reject their claims and what God t has told them to do? You know, why do you uh, reject those who say there is nothing wrong with homosexuality? Is it because you're trying to justify it within the Bible because the Bible says it? You know, God really ultimately is a byproduct of our own minds and our own nature. <clears throat> Even if he exists, chances are the God you experience is not the real thing. Chances of you getting every single thing right while everybody else gets everything wrong is impossible, pretty much. That you would be the one person on the whole planet who knows everything about God. You know, this is what happens a lot of the time. This is one of the biggest problems with, you know, personal experiences. Muslims can tell about how <coughs> they used to love pork. You know, they used to love bacon. But when they became Muslim, they realized it was wrong. And, and obviously... God must have been speaking to God because why would he change something he loves so much? It's because religion tends to guilt and tend to focus on the things that we like and make them wrong. And if you're already convinced of the Bible, then you're also going to be convinced of a lot of the things that the Bible says are wrong because you want to believe that the Bible is perfect. At the same time, you will only go as far as is your personality will let you. You won't say homosexuals should be killed as the Bible commands because you personally don't feel that's right. But maybe you have personal feelings that say that homosexuality is wrong or maybe you, you're afraid of it being true. Like maybe you think you're actually trying to help people. You know, that's the problem here. For every Christian like you that says homosexuality is wrong but can be saved. There's many Christians that say homosexuals should be killed. They should be jailed. They should be you know, <coughs> castrated. They should be whatever. And there's also many that say there is nothing wrong with it. You're just one person out of a broad spectrum of religious beliefs on homosexuality in every other part of Christianity. So tell me why, again, should we accept your ideas of God and personal experiences? You talk about consistencies and internal and logical. And I'm going to do a video on this a little bit later on, in the next couple of days, if I don't get distracted again. But I have a video idea already in the works for that. I'd like to hear, you know, I've never been able to get a real good explanation for why your interpretation of the Bible is more correct than someone else's when you do contradict parts of the Bible? Or do you think that we should still kill homosexuals? I mean, <clears throat> I don't think you do, but l let me know why. You know, why your interpretations of this perfect book and objective morals are so much different than many others. <clears throat>